Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying a rubber leg swimming nymph and um, this is a sort of variation on the original swimming nymph which I believe was a Bob Clouser pattern so I'm starting with uh, a slightly different hook instead of the, the standard um, like stimulator hook curved dry fly I'm going a bit heavier because I'm using this for carp and this is a Kensawada Black Sedge it's a nice heavy wire strong hook and then I'm going to run on a few turns of lead wire just at the th sort of thorax area not too many I don't want this to be super heavy and I'll start my thread, this is just 6 or danvils can use whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. You just use your thumbnail to knock down any sharp edges in the wire. And then just cover that up. Run my thread all the way down around the bend. And I'm ready to tie in my tail. I'm just using a bit of chickaboo, grizzly marabou. And that's sort of the length of the shank. Spiral the thread forward just to catch it on top of the hook shank and trim it just behind the lead wire. And then tidy up. That will give you a nice uh, Snap my thread. Happens sometimes. Just run over it again, just for a bit of security. And break away the waste piece. Um, the body I'm using hairy ice stub, but you can use like craw dub or just any natural dubbing or whatever, a bit of flash is up to you. I like the, the flash in the hairy ice stub. I'll brush it out <coughs> into the so that the flash sort of mixes in with the tail a wee bit and the thorax as well. So just get that caught on and you can keep it tight as you wind. Just form the shape up to the, where you want the thorax to start. Now uh, I'm going to tie in the thorax cover and I'm just using nymph skin. Um, this is a slight change from the original, which I believe was uh, Peacock Hill. But the Peacock Hill is not very durable. And it's not really seen anyway, because this is the underside of the fly. It rides hook point up. So, nymph skin is a bit tougher. And I'm going to coat it with some cement anyway, so... It'll be very durable. So, I'm making a, a dubbing loop for the thorax. Give it a good waxing to help grip the grip the material, and I've got some just natural zonker and a clip here. It's just about the right amount for this flight. Just tap the ends in as close as I dare go so that I've got like, the maximum length in the thorax area. And I'm just going to spin this up with my dub and twister. Nice and tight. Some fibres getting caught there, I'll just Getting a wee brush with an old toothbrush. And 
and just keep going until so you've got a very very tight rope and then I'll brush it again and this helps to just pull out any loose fibres and sort of it really sort of separates the fibres makes it much a much fluffier rope it makes it easier to handle it when you're winding it as well so oh. as you wind sweep the fibres back after each turn right? but don't wind on top of the turn before wind in front of it And that, that helps avoid trapping fibres. Keep going. All the way. There we go. That gets you up to near the eye. As if I've done this before. Come across your thread, catch it in with two or three wraps, fold it back, and then wind your thread back over the top to give you some space for the subsequent stages. It also helps you lose the tie in point, makes it a bit neater, a bit tougher as well. So, at this stage, we'll sp I'll split the rabbit fur over the back. Get it to just let it sit where it's sort of most natural. I'll pull the nymph skin forward. Tie it in nice and secure. Pull it tight. And trim off the waist. Just make sure it's sitting how you like. And now for the rubber legs, I'm just using silly legs uh, <clears throat> and to create a bit of an accent point I'm using fluorescent chartreuse with a hot orange tip. Uh, I'm a big believer in sort of bright accent colours when fishing for carp especially but other fish like it. So catch these in. So a loose wrap to position it. I want them slightly on the hook gap side. Like that. And when you pull tight they'll slightly kick up. And then you can whip finish. away your thread. Now all you need to do is sort of even up the legs so that these don't foul. I'll trim them just in line with the back of the hook and I'll trim these slightly shorter. Really like that. Then just as a wee final touch I like I'm coming in here with a pink pen, just a highlighter, doing the thread, I'll sweep it over the back. You don't need this, this is just me being fussy. It just sort of adds that sort of uh, wee attraction point. And then, dead simple, just come in to, to seal everything up with some head cement. Just got a blob on there, let it run back over the nymph skin and around around the head and that's basically it that's the swimming the rubber leg swimming nymph good carp fly bass will eat it trout will eat it tie them blacks rust olive 
change the leg color, change the size, change the weight. Um, I'm sure we'll catch fish for you, so if it's an effective pattern. And just as I said before, I'll just brush this to sort of draw the the flash into the tail a wee bit and into the rabbit fur. So I hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you tie some of these up and catch some fish on them. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. And share the video wherever you like as well. So, uh, thanks for watching guys. Tight lines. Bye.